Our text that we are going to study comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Notice verse 14 and 13 and 14. Paul said to the church at Corinth, Watch you. Stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. Be strong. And then in verse 14, Paul said, Let all the things that you do be done with charity. And that means love. Let everything that you do in your life come from the motivation of love for God and love for others. Now as you read over the letter of 1 Corinthians, you'll find that this church had more problems than any other church that's written about in all the New Testament. And so Paul says to them, be careful, be watchful, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, that means be courageous, be brave. And then notice Paul's admonition. Be strong. And then in verse 14, everything that you do is to be from the motivation of love. All through the Bible, God's people are told to be strong. If the congregation in Corinth was to overcome all of these problems you read about in the book, they're going to have to be strong. I hope that they did. And I hope that they were strong. Ephesians 6 verse 10, as, far as Paul concludes the Ephesian letter, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Verse 11, Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. As he told the brethren in Corinth, he told the brethren in Ephesus, be strong. We must understand from whence our strength comes. Notice Ephesians 6.10. Strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Our strength comes from our Lord. In the Gospel of John chapter 15 and verse number 5, Jesus said to His closest followers, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Our strength comes from the Lord Himself. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You have to take this verse in context. This doesn't mean you can do anything. 
this doesn't mean if you just believe in Christ, you can do anything on earth. You think it means that? Okay, then read the Bible in five minutes. You can do anything through Christ. How absurd. You must understand the context in which the, these words were written. One of the greatest fallacies of misunderstanding the Bible is just taking verses here and there and not considering the verses that surround them. What Paul is talking about in Philippians 4 is they are going to be able to do anything they need to do to be with Christ when this life is over. That's what Philippians 4.13 means, and that's all it means. 2 Timothy 4, 16 and 17. Paul is on trial for his life. He's appearing before the Roman authorities. They had the power of life and death. And notice what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, verse 16. He said, at my first offense, no man stood with me. All men forsook me. Where were the elders at the church at Rome? Where were the members of the Lord's church at the church at Rome when Paul was in prison? He said, all men forsook me. But look at verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthen me. We must understand where our strength comes from. It's not from ourselves. It's from God. All people left me he said, but the Lord was with me, and He strengthened me. Isn't it beautiful that we can be strong in the Lord? Would you like to be strong in the Lord? Would you like to be a stronger Christian? Or are you satisfied? then this, what I have to say, is not for you. Surely all of us wish we were stronger. I had tried to comfort people for over 50 years. And when affliction came to me, I was not as strong as I thought. And I did not depend enough upon the Lord to give me the strength that I needed, and I almost perished. It had been my own fault. God was there for me. Just like I told other people all those years, He was there for them. He was there for me. Think about the beauty of a strong Christian man and woman. Romans 4 and 20 said, Abraham was strong in the faith. If you're going to be strong in the Lord, your faith has to be strong. Not weak. And when I say faith, I don't just mean believing He's the Son of God. 
Faith has the idea of trust. Do you trust Him enough to hand your whole life over to Him? Do you trust Him enough that He's going to be with you? Hebrews 13, 5. How could we ever forget this promise? I did. What did God say to His children? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. We can depend on God. He will be there. As long as we are faithful to Him, He will be there for us. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. How is this strength applied? Look in 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. 1 John 2, verse 14. In this particular series of passages, John writes to several groups of people within the congregation there. And notice what he said. You are strong young men. And the Word of God abides within you and you have overcome the wicked one. That's who we have to understand, overcome. Because 1 Peter 5, 8 says, He's like a roaring lion going about the whole earth, seeking whom he may devour. But here are some people in the first century who didn't even have all the written New Testament like we have. And John said to them, you are strong. Notice their strength. It was because the Word of God was abiding within them. And thus they could overcome the devil. 1 John 2, verse number 14. In Psalm chapter 1, the psalmist contrasts a wicked person with a godly person. And notice the difference in Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. Here's the godly person. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in His law does He meditate day and night. That's the difference between a weak person and a strong person. They continually meditate upon the Word of the living God. Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy Word have I hid in my heart. Why? that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 97, Oh, how love I thy law! It is my meditation all of the day. That's the reason he was strong. But now you tell me, who's got time to do that? We got to go here, we got to go here, we got to do this, we got to do that. Who's got time to meditate on the Word of God all day? That simply means whatever you're doing in the back of your mind, you're thinking about the Word of God. That doesn't mean you have to be sitting down at a table all day long. That's not good for you either. <laughs> but all of the time, 
these people have their minds set on the Word of God. And that makes them strong. They love to study it. They love to meditate upon it. They love to think about it. They dream about it. It's constantly on their mind. Thus, they are strong and the others are weak. How can you be a stronger person in God? James 4, 7 and 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now think about that. Submit to God. We have to be willing to submit. Whatever He says in His divine Word that He wants us to do, we have to be willing to do that. To submit ourselves to God. If we're not willing to submit ourselves to God, we're going to do it our way. We're going to have it our way. We're not going to be strong in God. And then what's he say? Resist the devil. He's always there. He knows every weakness you have better than you know yourself. So you must resist Him. God's people must be willing to stand up against what is false, no matter who believes it, no matter who goes along with it, They are willing to stand up for what is right, for what is godly, and they are willing to stand against the the ungodliness of this world, brought upon this world by Satan and his followers. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. They said on the TV, If you exercise in a regular fashion, that's the key, in a regular fashion, then you help prevent obesity, which helps prevent diabetes and stroke and heart attack. But who's got time for that? Well, do you have time for a stroke? Do you have time for a heart attack? What's he tell us in 1 Timothy 4, 7? You see, the Bible tells us that exercise is good long before they said it on Fox News. It was in the Bible a long time before that in 1 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. Notice what he said to Timothy. Exercise yourself unto godliness. And then he explains in verse 8, exercise in godliness is good not only for this life, but in the life which is to come. 1 Timothy 4, 7, and 8. So to be strong, we must exercise ourselves in godliness. Doing what is good and kind and compassionate for our fellow man. Now you remember in our text in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14, 
He said, be strong. But then he turned right around in the next verse, verse 14, it says, everything you do, do in love. That's where strength is found. Who was the strongest man that ever lived on this earth? Not Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know how they found out he had an affair with the maid? One time Arnold went over to the house and he decided he'd vacuum and the little boy that was with him picked up the couch with one hand and Arnold swept under it. That's how they found out. But what does he tell us here? What is strength? Strength is found in Christian love. The greatest, strongest person to ever live on earth was Jesus. And He was the most loving, compassionate, kind individual that's ever lived. People have adored His compassion and kindness for centuries. There's been no one like Him. And that was a part of His strength. Love and compassion. John 13, 35, Jesus said, Hereby shall all men know that you are My disciples, if you have love one for another. 1 John 4, 8. He that does not love does not know God. For God is love. God is the epitome of power and strength. Created the universe and everything we can see. And yet 1 John 4, 8 says... God is the very epitome of love. So being strong in the Lord is one of the reasons we're on this earth. God desires for us to follow Him, but not a bunch of weaklings. He wants strength. He wants us to show that strength by the way we live and the way that we talk. Whatever you think about politics, I don't even like to talk about it. It's so disgusting. But I'll tell you one thing. If you even listen just a little bit, most of you understand, I don't care what your persuasion is politically, most of you understand America is headed for trouble. Now you can blame it on whoever you want. Blame it on whoever you want. The truth is, it's Probably both parties that have contributed to where we are headed. We are headed for trouble in this nation. And if that trouble should come, that looks surely like it's going to. We must be prepared. We must be strong. We must be ready for whatever comes. To be strong, you must determine in your mind, I am going to be faithful to the Lord and His church no matter what happens in this life. No matter what afflictions may come to me, no matter how bad it may be, 
I will remain faithful to my Lord. I will not forsake Him regardless of what anyone else does. That is my goal in life, to be faithful to the Lord and His church. We must determine that's going to be our stand. Matthew 10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. Jesus sends His followers out and He says, you're going to be hated by all men for My name's sake. But he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved. We must make that determination. Hebrews 12, 12. This is a pathetic image. This is pathetic. Here's a group of Christians who are not strong. They are weak. And the Hebrew writer, whoever he was, the Holy Spirit, notice what he said. Lift up the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. Have you ever been so weak that you didn't think your knees could hold up the weight of your body? That's the way these people are spiritually. And the writer of Hebrews said, lift them up. He didn't walk over and say, say to them, well, at your own fault, you're weak. Get up. Then give them a little kick. No, that's not what he said. He said, lift them up. Lift those people up. We have to understand when we go through the trials of life, we are not alone. Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is with us. And Christians, we are to be there for one another. When someone goes through affliction, it's not like we say, oh, well, they just want to make excuses. Maybe they're really hurting. And what should we do? Well, let's go to the Bible. Galatians 6. This is what we should do. Galatians 6, verse 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now look at Galatians 6, 2. Here's what we're supposed to do as God's church. Bear ye one another's burdens, and what? So fulfill the law of Christ. Bearing another brother or sister's burdens, that is not weakness, that is strength. And that is fulfilling the law of Christ. Why do you think when the Israelis went through that horrible massacre, so many people got on TV? I'm not talking about the idiots. I'm talking about good people who got on, on television and says, you are not alone. We stand with you. Brethren, that's the way the church ought to be. When somebody's going 
through a difficult time, we should be there for that person. That's one of the reasons we're here. So we can find strength. We can find strength in our fellow Christians. The church is a hospital for those who are in spiritual need. And we need to be there for them. And if you don't have time, if that's not your personality, then change it. And make the time. What could be more important than fulfilling the law of Christ? How do you be stronger in Christ? You have to be willing to submit to Christ. If you're not willing to submit to Christ, you cannot be strong in Christ. That's number one. You've got to be willing to do what He says, not what you think, not how you feel, not how you are. You have to be willing to submit. To submit and take care of your sins, you have to repent and be immersed. There is no way that you're going to be strong in Christ if you simply ignore His commandments for forgiveness. You can be strong in Christ. You can begin now.